Um, and when you analyse it, what you find is that all the data that everybody talks about basically all comes back to the same source, which is something called GERS, Government Expenditure Revenue Scotland Report, um, which comes out every year, gives the data for Scotland as compared to the UK um, for the previous year. And um, it's a fairly lengthy document, 90 odd pages, lots of spreadsheets, etc. But this is a data source that everybody, Scottish Government, UK Government, people at the IFS, any independent economists, they base all their numbers on. So the problem, of course, is they'll put a completely different spin on it. So you've really got to go back to the source to see where this stuff's coming from so you can try and figure out what, uh, what it looks like without the spin. Okay. So let's start at the beginning. Let's look at Gers. Question one, what does Scotland's income and expenditure look like? So the Government of Scotland, how much money does it get coming in? How much money does it spend? Okay. And here's the numbers. This is 2011-12, which is the last full year we've got the Gers data for. Scotland's income, about 57 billion. Scotland's expenditure, 64.5 billion. Okay. So fact number one, there's a deficit and Scotland spends more than it earns. So when people say Scotland spends more than it earns, that's true, okay? So, there's more to it than this. Number two, what does the UK look like? So if you add in the UK, obviously the numbers are much bigger, um, 573 billion income, nearly 700 billion spend, UK's got a deficit of 121 billion, okay? So Scotland's got a deficit, a small one, the UK's got a much bigger one. Um, the UK spends a lot more than it earns, okay? So how do you compare the two? Well, you look at the numbers and say, well, what does that actually mean? Is it better or worse? So what I've done is just divided one by the other. So the amount of expenditure divided by income, and what that means, if you read the words at the bottom, in other words, for every £100 that Scotland raises in income, it spends £113. For every £100 the UK raises, it spends £121. So Scotland is not paying its way in that sense. The UK is much further away from paying its way, okay? Um, now, the reason for that, of course, is we've had the economic crash. The whole, every country in the Western world is running a deficit. It's spending more than it earns at the moment, um, with the exception of Norway, funnily enough. Um, and that's the way it goes. When the economy recovers in the next five or ten years, then it will swing back round and people will be back in surplus. So put it in context, when people say Scotland has got a deficit, that's true. But when you compare it to the UK, it's, um, it's a lot better than the UK deficit. So very big numbers there, billions and billions of pounds. Let's break it down into per person. People can relate to that. Um, when you take the population for Scotland in the UK and then you look at the income and the expenditure per person, something people can relate to, um, Scotland's income, £10,700. And uh, compared to the UK of just over £9,000. And then Scotland's expenditure, just over 12000 compared to the UK, at just about 11000 so let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. What that means is that in terms of income, Scotland generates, every person in Scotland on average generates £1,700 more in tax than the UK does, okay? Um, and we spend about £1,200 more, okay? So when the no campaign say to you, yes, but Scotland is subsidised because they spend more per person in Scotland, that's true, but they always forget to tell you that we generate a lot more than that difference in, uh, in tax, okay? So, there you go. Nearly £1,700 versus £1,200. Now, that's fine as far as it goes, but the question you need to be asking then is, if we vote no, how long do you think voters in the south of England are going to allow Scots to be getting paid more per, um, per person? Um, than they are, okay? They don't care about the fact that we generate more tax. All they, they care about is why do the Scots get, get more, more spending. The reason we get more spending, of course, is a number of reasons. A, we've got a geography and a dispersed population, which means some services cost more. We've also got a lot of things, obviously, here that are free, that aren't down south. And also there's, there's a lot of parts of um, health service, etc., down south that are privatised that aren't in Scotland. So that's, that's the reasons why, why there's more spend. So you've really got to put that in context and say, when somebody says to you, ah, but Scots spend more per head, yes, that's true, but we generate a lot more than that per head in income. And what do you think is going to happen in the event of a no vote to that extra spend that we currently get? Okay. So everybody's thinking, how do we spend more than they earn? Where does all the money come from? Okay. So, 
The difference between what you spend and what you earn is a deficit, and basically governments fund that by borrowing on the international money markets. Okay, they go and sell um, bonds, etc., to uh, to raise that cash. And as I said, the UK um, deficit 121 billion last year. This year, it's heading for another 120 billion. The total accumulated UK debt is uh, nearly 1.4 trillion, which scarily is equivalent to nearly 22,000 pounds per person, man, woman, and child in the UK. Right? So people talk about the UK's got a debt problem. It sure does. Okay. It's um, there are some countries that are worse than that. Greece, for example. Um, but many, many countries that are a lot better than that. Um, the UK is actually worse than Spain in terms of a debt to GDP ratio, which you don't hear very often. So um, we sometimes talk about the burning platform. Why would you leave if everything's great? Well, everything ain't great. Everything's actually pretty bad. 